After watching the boys season 4, all I could say is that my jaw was on the floor, I was sitting there clamoring for more, feeling like a drug addict that needed that next hit of its obsession, which is The Boys, and I cannot wait for season five, but today we're talking about season four, which I just got done watching all eight episodes. It is going to be premiering its first three episodes, then week to week releasing a new one, and man, uh, you guys are in for one hell of a ride. Uh, The Boys, I think season four establishes it. If you didn't already believe this, it is the best superhero show going right now. I used to think kind of Invincible was that. X-Men 97, we need to see what season two is going to be, but this is like definitively that is it. Uh, and I think season four establishes that in so many different lights, and I'm so excited to talk about it. Of course, this will be a non-spoiler review. I will not be spoiling anything in this review, so you are safe, but... If the point of a season is to just keep getting you excited for the boys and more and more of it to come, then that is exactly what season four did. And I will say this is that I went into the season going, I hope this is good setup and then season five can be the finale as they've talked about that. But obviously plans have now changed and season five will not be the final season of the boys. And after watching four, I'm actually really happy about that. Before going in, I wasn't. I kind of rolled my eyes and I'm like, how much longer can you honestly keep this going with Homelander being the villain? And it turns out in a really great way as long as the writing is there. And I think a lot of that feeling just came from season three and like in the Hero Gasm episode where they were this close to killing him. And it's like, how close can you keep getting to that point? And I think season four kind of solves a lot of that while at the same time giving us answers to things that we need, but also giving us more questions and establishing new story directions that makes this feel fresh as ever. And of course, gory, bloody, and disgusting. So again, I'm very excited to talk about The Boys Season 4 today. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below, hit that like, subscribe button, and of course, without further ado, let's get into my review. So, the number one pro I actually really want to give this season is the handling of all the characters. When it comes down to the boys, there is an immaculate cast of characters here. And every single one, I always feel in certain seasons, some people get shifted, some people get sidelined. And that's not always the best feeling because you want every character to kind of find their groove and get a little bit more of a nuance. And I found that a lot within the seven, like they didn't really know what to do with the deep and a train. And what I'm actually really happy to say here is that I felt every single character in in this season got something to do to the point that where if it's jumping over to Kimiko and Frenchie, I actually am intrigued with what's going on there. Or say we jump over back to again, a trainer, the deep it's never feeling like their storylines are going away and feeling a miss from the direct storyline of butcher Homelander. And of course, other new characters such as sister Sage I always found that Homelander and butcher. I was always clamoring to go back to their storyline in the previous seasons. And I was really happy to see how they were able to balance this. I think that is actually the best thing about season four is the balancing of every single character. It actually gave deeply rooted emotions for every single person and actually excelled in the directions that they gave to each and every one of them. And that's what I really want to say is I thought the performances in this season were phenomenal. I do want to kind of start with the newer cast though. One of those is the character Sister Sage played by Susan Hayward. I thought she was phenomenal in this season. I wasn't expecting her character to kind of blow it out of the park, but this character is kooky, insane, smart, and very different, and always surprising you in its new avenues that it was trying to take the character. And again, I think Susan Hayward did an incredible job with that. Jeffrey Dean Morgan plays a very secret character in here that I truly loved. I love the dynamic between him and, of course, Carl Urban and what that dynamic seemingly comes about to be by the end of the storyline. Maybe it gets a little bit too predictable with what they're trying to do. Like, I could definitely see where this was going by at least episode four or five, but I still thought it was very deeply rooted and crafted to such an excellent degree. And again, Jeffrey Dean Morgan is phenomenal in this. Well, as for new cast, I thought Valerie Curry as Firecracker was awesome also awesome in this i think what she plays off more is in towards the satirical view of the boys and what the boys is viewing as an output towards our entire life i think in some degrees the boys has evolved from just being a satire on superheroes and corporations also a satire on our entire world and i think it's a nice input and output to look at that and laugh at that's not going to be for everybody some people might think it's going a little bit too far to a certain degree maybe sometimes i thought it was but it still always kept me laughing and engaged and entertained the entire way through. And speaking about Firecracker, there's one moment in this entire season where they go to like a convention to confront her about something. And, you know, 
we had Hero Gasm. There's some wild shit that happens at that entire convention that I, uh, my wife was watching this with me. She's never seen anything of the boys. Yeah, her mind was like blown at <laughs> that. She's like, what the fuck is this? Thing is a big thing. It is always a what the fuck is this moment with the boys. And this season has plenty of those. But I always felt that it never went to that too far of a degree. The boys season three rubbed me a little bit wrong in the first three episodes with primarily a lot of that like what the fuck are we doing type of situation where it was just disgusting to be disgusting. And sometimes the boys is still disgusting to be disgusting. But it never felt like it was prominently put into your face. I really focused in on story and character development this season, which was the thing that really won me over and made me love this show. And again, brought me back to the same feeling of what I had with season one, where it was a nice satire. It had great character development, great world building, but also a great story that really just blew your mind at certain moments. And this season, it's been a while since this has happened. Gen V, I think, brought a little bit of this back too where my mind was legitimately blown. My jaw would hit the floor multiple times where maybe I assumed something would happen, but I didn't expect that to happen. And that starts from the very first episode all the way to the very last, where my jaw just continuously kept hitting the fucking floor. Of course, the rest of the cast is great. Carl Urban as Billy Butcher, I absolutely adore. Jack Quaid as Huey Campbell, love him. Anthony Starr is just perfection as Homelander. Erin Moriarty as Starlight, I thought she was actually really great in here. She got a lot to work with. Laz Alonzo as Mother's Milk, I think he is actually one of the big hearts of this entire story. But again, it goes as far to say how every single one of these characters gets to play in a different round field and gets to have something different happen to the characters where you really build off them. Jesse T. Usher's A-Train, I thought, got a lot to do in here, and I was so happy because I think he's phenomenal in this. Chance Crawford, I actually think they finally did something with the Deep. Going into the season, I just felt like they needed to do a little bit more with the Deep, and thankfully, they finally did. Of course, Tomer Capone as Frenchie is great. Karen Fukuhara as Kimiko is fantastic. And what they do with Black Noir, not what I expected, but really damn funny. And it's like a completely different twist on the character. And again, a satirical nature towards our society, towards filmmaking, towards other things in the superhero genre that I was just very happy on how they approached that. I also have to mention that Claudia Domit, who plays Victoria Newman, is just great in here. I think, again, every single one of these actors gives probably their best performance of this entire show. Only how they're able to provide and give into these characters. Once again, this is in some ways the most personal season towards each and every one of the characters episode four i think is going to be a really truly eye opener for some especially when it comes down to homelander fans and who's interested in seeing a little bit more of his story this is one of those seasons that just truly goes deeper into every single one of the characters and what they're feeling and what we've seen through the previous last few seasons coming in as well the action is just great the humor is awesome the blood and gore as i mentioned is all there and it just continues to make your jaw continuously drop but I think that is where I find that this season is the best at balancing everything and especially with what they did with Homelander's kid in here now I haven't been a big fan of this kid he's kind of just gotten on my nerves ever since they introduced him but for me this was the best consistency of the character can't wait and I think overall, when playing around with this season, this was the best stuff that they've done so far with Ryan. Truly enough, this is a very hard show to talk about without talking about spoilers because of the amount of shit that can happen in each and every episode. Every episode is built where it feels like there's no waste of time. And I found myself just truly engaged and wanting to jump into the next. This was actually one of the few shows that I didn't just put off on watching the screeners. I sat down, watched the first four, wanted to keep watching more, got into five and six, and then I had to stop for like a, almost an entire day and I was just chomping at the bits to finish it. And when I finally just finished it, literally like 20 minutes ago, I was sitting there like, oh my God. God, I need season five. I spoke from the beginning. This is in some ways a great dynamic and shifting of the entire boys into what really we are going into the landscape of the show and shifting into a different medium. And that is one thing that by the end of this season, they opened so many new doors that I was excited and hopeful that we just keep getting the same consistency with this show and with this world. And again, season four made me just realize that 
yeah, this is the most consistent and best superhero thing going on right now. And honestly, when it comes down to like issues with season four, there's a couple things that I think they could have done a little bit better. And I feel like that most of that's in the first three episodes as it's kind of weird because I do feel that with most of the boys except season one, where I feel like the first three episodes of every season is a little bit hard with establishing with what the season's going to be. And while season four, I think gets off to a better start than I thought season three did for me, it is a little bit slower. But it also is trying to finish storylines from season three and also tie up certain things from Gen V. So if you didn't watch Gen V, I highly recommend you probably go check it out before watching this one. Not like it's absolutely needed or necessary, but it definitely fills some holes in certain characters that do show up in this season. You honestly should watch Gen V because it was phenomenal. Going back to that, the first three episodes, it's really hard to narrow down where the issues lie in here, but there were certain storylines that I thought they were going to focus a little bit more time on, specifically like Homelander's Trial and they didn't like like the ending I felt of the boys season three left us open to this like giant thing that was going to happen with Homelander. And while they definitely definitely take a different approach to it, it feels like they rushed through a little bit of that aspect. Then again, once they got past it, it kind of just became a blink in my the back of my head. And I didn't really even think about it going forward. A lot of that is because so much of the other storylines and so much of the other aspects they've already introduced just consistently got better and better. And every episode always introduced something new that kept me on my toes. Again, Sister Sage is an absolute incredible character and what they were able to do with a character that's just one of the smartest superheroes in the entire world and in general the smartest person in the world I thought was that was such an interesting dynamic to see how they were able to play that out and use that superpower but also other superpowers that you get to see play out in here there's one that I think it's introduced in about episode seven that I thought was like one of the most unique things that they have done so far and again is a very scary thing to think about in this world when they start playing out this idea of this person's gonna do this thing and they have this power. That is absolutely terrifying. But overall, I thought The Boys Season 4 was phenomenal. This establishes that it's the best superhero franchise going right now, personally. It's just one of those shows that it knows what it needs to do. And I think Eric Kripke, who is the creator of this series, knew exactly what they needed to do. They built on the fundamentals of the last season, added more, but brought in a big complaint that I've had, which is just truly enough making all the characters seem useful in the season and finding a good approach to bringing them all in. And again, giving them meaningful storylines and meaningful character arcs that execute in a way at the end of the season to where I go, man, I'm glad season five is not the final season. I need more of this. And I went into the season not needing that. I wanted them to start tying this shit up and not having it just go and keep going, such as like Supernatural went on, The Walking Dead went on. There was a clear cut cohesive ending that you could have gone to, but they found a way to keep expanding this world and expanding a story that now I'm even more excited to see what they can do with season five with all the new additions and all the new ideas that they put into within this show. Yeah, I think the boys season four is phenomenal. I love this season. I had a couple gripes here and there, but overall it was an absolute experience and I cannot wait for you guys to check it out. So all that said, I'm going to give this series an A minus. For people wondering, here's my ranking of the boys so far right now. I probably go the boys season one, the boys season four, Gen V, the boys season three, and then the boys season two. I absolutely can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts. Thank you so much again for watching this. And of course, until next time, stay classy.